For better or worse, Nancy Grace has played a key role in shaping modern American punditry, with millions of viewers looking to her as a sort of abrasive moral compass. A self-described crusader for victims' rights, Grace arguably created more than a few new victims herself, and she vowed to continue her work after leaving her top-rated HLN series in October 2015. You know what they say, though, judge not lest ye be judged yourself. With that in mind, here's a closer look at the untold truth of Nancy Grace. Her fiancé was murdered. Before studying law, Grace pursued a degree in literature with the goal of becoming an English professor. At 19, her life and ambitions changed dramatically when her fiancé, Keith Griffin, was shot and killed by a former co-worker. Following his death, she enrolled in law school and went on to become a felony prosecutor and victim's rights advocate. Grace wrote about the crime in her 2005 book Objection and referenced it in broadcast countless times, citing it as her reason for becoming prosecutor. I actually very rarely discuss it, I, other than alluding to it briefly if, if I'm asked questions about it. In 2006, though, Grace was taken to task in an article in The Observer which pointed out numerous contradictions in her retelling of the story, leading some to accuse her of exploiting the tragedy. Still, Grace has vehemently denied any dishonesty. Link to Suicides In 2006, Melinda Duckett appeared on Grace's show to discuss the disappearance of her two-year-old son, Trenton. Grace pressed the mother for details, stating publicly that Duckett should assume responsibility for the disappearance. Before the episode could air, Duckett shot and killed herself. Then in 2011, Tony Madrano was charged with second-degree manslaughter for accidentally killing her baby while sleeping on the couch with him after drinking a fifth of vodka. Calling her the vodka mom, Grace pushed on air for a murder charge. Three weeks later, Madrano committed suicide by setting herself on fire. In both cases, the family sued Grace, blaming the suicides on the resultant outpouring of public shame following Grace's interviews. Grace settled both cases out of court. More lawsuits Grace has been sued multiple times throughout her career and not just for driving guests to suicide. According to The Hollywood Reporter, she had to issue an apology to Michael Skakel after incorrectly claiming on her show that his DNA had been found at a crime scene. Skakel, a cousin of the Kennedy family who had infamously been convicted of murder in 2002 for the 1975 killing of neighbor Martha Moxley, was freed after 11 years of prison for a retrial. After Grace's televised comments, he sued her, alleging that her comments hurt his reputation and chances of receiving a fair retrial. They reached a settlement which included Grace being forced to publish an admission of incorrect reporting. And according to the Associated Press, around the time of that settlement, another man sued Grace for defamation. Why? Grace continued using his photo on air and said this about him. This is a textbook serial killer's calling card. Even after police cleared him of any wrongdoing. Inspired fictional characters Grace has inspired episodes in numerous crime series, including Law & Order Special Victims Unit, which based one storyline on the aforementioned suicide controversies, and Criminal Intent, which developed Faith Yancey, a recurring character based on Grace. Satirical news site The Onion pulls no punches with the character of Shelby Cross, a clear and regular send-up of Grace on its news network, and she's been routinely parodied everywhere from Saturday Night Live to Funny or Die. Tonight, Lady Justice lies weeping in a grave filled with lies. Grace also reportedly inspired the character of Ellen Abbott in the novel and movie adaptation of Gone Girl, an imitation she referred to as flattering and funny. Accused of faking an interview In 2013, Grace and CNN's Ashley Banfield were accused of faking a split-screen satellite interview while reporting on three women who escaped after being kidnapped in Ohio. The wacky moment was exposed by The Wire, who noted a slew of bizarre details about the alleged satellite interview. Like, you know, how the same cars appeared to be zipping past Grace and Banfield in the background and that they appeared to be standing in front of the same building. Nice job, you two! Disgruntled ex-employee When Grace confirmed in June 2016 that she was leaving HLN after 12 years, no one was more happy to see her go than former employee Mary Sella. Sella took to Twitter to publicly celebrate the news and share a few choice morsels about what it was like, in her opinion, to work for Grace. Sella tweeted, I'm celebrating Nancy Grace's departure from HLN by stopping on her headshot while wearing the shoe she threw at me one time. But first I'll hide in my cubicle, shaking in fear and sobbing uncontrollably for old time's sake. 
Maybe I'll cap off the evening by finally going to the orgy she once asked me in front of the whole staff if I'd be attending after work. Honestly, if I saw Nancy, I'd wish her well, except I wouldn't recognize her because she looks like a blank sheet of paper without makeup. Stella finished her epic rant with one final jab, saying, Tweeting about a former employer like this may not be classy, but I've seen Nancy eat her weight in waffles after 6 p.m., so it feels fair. Some celebs hate her too. Throughout Grace's many years on HLN, a handful of celebrities have expressed their disdain over her controversial coverage. Included on the list? Actor Seth Rogen, who called Grace some choice words on Twitter after she posted a handful of anti-marijuana tweets. Rogen retorted back to Grace's claims with, You are a f dumbass. Grace later replied, Hi Seth, thanks for watching. Prompting model Chrissy Teigen to tweet, He isn't watching. No one smart is watching. We are reading your dumbass tweets. Meanwhile, sources for TMZ claimed in September 2011 that Love Story actor Ryan O'Neal dropped out of Dancing with the Stars because he can't stand Grace. According to the report, O'Neal, who claimed he simply had a bad knee, was upset by Grace's coverage of his son's ongoing drug problems and suggestions that O'Neal had been a bad parent. Needless to say, she didn't apologize. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Oh, and speaking of Dancing with the Stars, Fart Attack. In October 2011, the internet went wild with speculation after a noise sounding very similar to a fart was heard during a post-dance interview with Grace on Dancing with the Stars. I saw them several times during the dance and they were smiling so big. <laughs> this led outlets such as TMZ to ponder if Grace had, indeed, dealt it. For her part, Grace told TMZ that an investigation was underway to find the perpetrator, saying, as an ear witness on the scene, I can absolutely exonerate Tristan McManus, myself, and Brooke Burke. However, the rest of the cast, seated just inches away, all remain under grave suspicion. But something about her story stinks. So big. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know what you think about Nancy Grace.